blue for bragging rights in the state of Nebraska. Since 2010, Nebraska is a red state once more. It is, in fact, a great week to be wearing Husker Red in the state of Nebraska. And after that win over in-state rival Creighton, we are thrilled to be joined by one of our all-time favorites, Husker headman Tim Miles, joining us from our campus studio in Lincoln. All right, Tim, I'll get into the team, that game in a second. But let's start with the atmosphere. I know it's an in-state rival, but we're talking early December, non-conference, and PBA looked as good as any arena I've seen in the nation this year. Well, Rick, you're exactly right. Again, it, PBA was uh, ridiculously um, exciting. It was a very festive environment. I think our fans were were just awesome. And, you know, other years we've seen a little more spackle of blue in that arena uh, some years, but there wasn't much of it to be found this year. Fans love offense, and in December, your team has been providing over 80 points per game offensively. What do you like about the way that your team is flowing on the offensive side and the efficiency of the offense? Well, I think the, 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 the most important part for us is the versatility of the team. Uh, last night, James Palmer, who had 30 points, right, he goes in with two, foul, um, two, uh, two fouls in the first half, and we make a run. And, and that's where other guys really stepped up and made plays for us, whether it be Glenn Watson, Isaac Copeland, Isaiah Roby, or even some of our Thomas Allen last night, some of our younger guys, Nana Kenton. Those guys were really, really strong for us. You mentioned Palmer's 30. Let's head back to the post-game press conference in a great moment when Palmer had to be reminded by one of his teammates just how big a day he had. I didn't know you had 30. What's up? I didn't need, you need six threes? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I was feeling it. So, Tim, what does it mean to a coach when the star player who goes out and drops 30 doesn't even realize that that's what he did to the stat sheet? Well, that's a what a fun moment, you know. A, I can't lie, I was feeling it. <laughs> I mean, uh, pretty cool stuff with uh, when you see those guys on a hot mic. And, and what it means is that you've got a team that was very locked in. You know, we, we talk about that a lot here at Nebraska, about being locked in, only playing in the moment, living for the moment. And when, when a guy like James has that kind of mentality, it's amazing what he can do. He's a, he's a real difference maker in our league. Huge difference maker this year for you guys could be the non-conference schedule. I mean, it has been brutal is a fair word. You had Seton Hall, you had Texas Tech, you had Clemson, you had Creighton, you have Oklahoma State, a quality team, this weekend. How much does that help to have the success that you've had in non-conference when you start to deal with the Big Ten and as deep as this league is this year? Well, we took Cal State Fullerton, too, who was an NCAA team last year. So uh, these games are really important. And, and last year, you know, things didn't fall our, uh, our right way. We lost a game in an early tournament. Some of the league teams had some injuries uh, that were our two plays. But I think it'll be a lot different this year. I think our league is really strong. I mean, I, you can make a, a case for nine or ten teams at this point, although it's early. It's, it's really impressive to see what the Big Ten has done. Our conference, I, I thought it was important with our non-conference schedule, Schedule, that we make sure that it's unmistakable that we're an NCAA tournament team. And so we've taken on some challenges, and uh, we've been successful in some, not so in others. Uh, but we're ready for this, and I uh, can't wait to get going here. It should be an exciting, exciting uh, conference here for the Big Ten, and then postseason play will be great, too. And like the rest of the Big Ten, you had the early start. You have all these conference games. How does it affect the way that you coach and maybe more specifically manage the team over the course of the year as far as practice time versus the time the guys need to rest. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now, Rick. That's a good point. As we come into this, you know, we just came off the Big Ten ACC challenge right into league play and then a rival game. So we need some rest. Uh, we'll do some real low-key stuff this week for them. It's finals week. And, and I think all great defensive teams need some rest, too. So I think that's critical. But you also have to keep a competitive 
uh, spirit by yourself because now where we had three games in seven days, we have three games in three weeks. Uh, and so as we go forward, it's important for us uh, to keep that edge and, and keep growing and building as a team, getting ready for conference play. These, four, these early Big Ten games, I think, are great. The way they're sandwiched around the uh, Big Ten championship football game, I think is really good for our league. I think it's been a big hit. Tim, you know as well as anyone that a coach's popularity is often defined by wins and losses. Right now, you're a popular guy in Lincoln. That's the way that it happens. But I think I can make the argument, and you're possibly to fall for this, that you're not the most popular internet sensation in your own home because you post Twitter pics all the time of your dog, Sammy, and she is becoming a little bit of an internet star. Yeah, she's got her own uh, Twitter account. Uh, I see they had a, an enlarged Sammy head where she had her, uh, her, she had her mouth open, her tongue wagging, uh, because I was eating guacamole one night. She wanted a little bit of guac. And uh, she's kind of taking on a life of her own. She's a pretty big deal. However, she stays humble. You know, she, she's a pretty good girl that way. She, um, you know, we give her an extra treat now and again if she does something nice and uh, makes a big uh, splash on the Internet for us. So. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed, though. Most recently I saw that she broke curfew, and so I'm curious as to yeah. what the punishment might be in the Miles household. Yeah, she got some extra laps around the yard and uh, no treats for the morning session at all. Well, hopefully your players are listening in because now they know that that's the punishment should they break curfew. Uh, hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully everybody gets some good rest. Uh, enjoy the week until you get Oklahoma State on Sunday, and best of luck against the Cowboys. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me on.